Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From when? Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. And EJ is still talking when I'm trying to do the intro. Well, nobody told me I was supposed to shut up. Yeah, well, you get that. Anyway, welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. This is podcast number 79, which is a terrifyingly high number. Anyway, this week's podcast wasn't necessarily planned as much as it was, oh god, oh god, there's 10 minutes left, let's throw Stuart out of the bus and give control to Stuart. (laughs) So, Stuart, what's on this week? Absolutely no, no, no. That's it, everyone. Podcast is over. Great talking to you all. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. Anyway, you've heard him already. EJ's here. Finally, we have EJ back. (laughs) (laughs) We have Eugene. Hello. We have Amy. Hello. And we have Under the Bus Stuart. I don't like being under the bus. It's not nice. <laughs> it's not comfortable either. And every no, now and again, not. you might hear my birds off in the distance in the background. Because they're in a very, very noisy mood. Even though they're three rooms away and all the doors are closed. Noisy little bastards. So, anyway... Uh, This week we are talking about a few different things, most of which were EJ's ideas. So, what I will do, instead of throwing Stuart under the bus, I'll throw EJ under the bus. What's on deck this week, EJ? Oh my god, the pain! The pain! The bus is heavy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, I I mean, like I said, it was up to you. I was just kind of spitballing. Um... There's a few different things we could talk about. Uh, we could talk about Deadliest Fandom. Uh, we could talk about Nobility, because, you know, I'm here, and, and that's kind of something I know how to talk about at this point, I would hope. Uh, or we could talk about um, something that I've been debating folks uh, online with uh, on Facebook, which is the new Ghost in the Shell movie uh, casting Scarlett Johansson in the lead character, which was originally written in the anime and manga uh, for a uh, Japanese girl, so yeah, okay, well, and I all the like... Hollywood washing stuff that's been going on. I, I, I actually like the idea of the last one, Ghost in a Shell, and the white washing. It's a very controversial topic. Let's dive in head first. Let's do it. Yes. Go. <laughs> ah, and the bus is off of me. <laughs> <laughs> pain, pain. Um, I. I, I, I've actually read and watched Ghost in the Shell, and I was apprehensive, I'll admit, when I first heard what they were going to do. Did you but hear they tried to the Asianify first... them with CG? Yeah, that was even worse. That was something they, they experimented with, I don't think they actually did it. No, yeah. they're not going to use that, it. No, no, my point is, the fact that they went as far as experimenting with it sort of really underlines it. True. So, that being said, after the sh- first couple of shots and stuff that have come out, don't mind what I've seen so far. Yeah. Well, see, I haven't seen until Ghost I, in until a I Shell. See a, so. Until I've seen a trailer or something, I can't make a full judgment. Yeah. Well, see, I haven't seen Ghost in a Shell, so I don't... I, it's on my list, like a lot of other things. Speaking of which, EJ, you'll be happy to know I'm halfway through Season 1 of Deep Space Nine and I haven't killed myself yet. Yay! I have considered. You'll it. you'll you'll actually you know I'll actually have some respect for you now. Yeah. Anyway, so back back <laughs> back. Wow. Back on topic for Ghost of the Shell. Um. So I haven't actually seen it, so I can't really comment that much on the story or anything like that. But the the I know that the whitewashing of Hollywood has been a big sort of issue over the years, and I know it's getting better. And there's only really one person here that can has enough experience to uh, to talk to that. So, Stuart, what do you think? Yeah, for Stuart, go. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! 
<laughs> oh god we are going to the special place in hell reserved for child molesters and people who talk at the movie theater <laughs> the sad thing is I'm one of those I'm, I'm the second one of that oh. <laughs> I don't do it you're, you're right the second one is much worse I'm just I'm, no 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 it's just the way that he said that I'm one of those it's like wow <laughs> <laughs> Leaving that alone. I can't alone. wait for next week. And moving right along. <laughs> Why? What's next week? Uh, oh, what? Civil War. <laughs> next week is Civil War. So anyway, Civil War was next week. Yikes. Yeah. yeah. See, see, that's the good thing about being Australian, Jay. We get Civil War a full week and a half before you. Yeah. Screw you. <laughs> so anyway. No, thank you. White washing in. Suck, don't. White washing in Hollywood. Let's actually let. Because EJ is the one that has the most experience with this, being over there and having to deal with that sort of stuff. Um, what are your thoughts on it, sir? Well, I mean, it's hard for me to. I mean, I, I'm not familiar with Ghost in the Shell either, and and I and I don't know the uh, source materials uh, or the circumstances. I do know that there's not a lot of Asian actresses out here that. Um, could bring in the kind of funding someone like Scarlett Johansson could. And so the only solution, other than casting someone like Scarlett Johansson, I can think of is do what they did with Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and cast someone who's lesser known or an un complete unknown as the lead and then have all the um, ancillary characters be uh, folks who are, who are well known and then that's how you get your funding. Uh, so in that specific instance, you know, it's, it's kind of like a catch 22, uh, where, you know, you're going to get a bunch of flack if you don't cast an Asian actress, but at the same time, you know, you, you need to get your funding. Um, where I can really speak on it is kind of how I've handled myself when it comes to, uh, gender and, and race within my own projects and the best way I found to handle it for my own projects is to not give a shit. Um, yeah. And what sort I of, mean by that is... Mm -hmm. So effectively, you look at the CV, you look at the experience, you look at how good the person is, and you look past anything like gender, race, all that sort of stuff. And that Ex just doesn't I, 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 even yes. factor in. Uh, I mean, I can't say it completely doesn't factor in, um, in the sense that if the character or story calls for a member of a certain race, great. Uh, oftentimes I'll conceive of the character as one race, uh, and this happened a lot even with nobility where I would conceive the character of one race, and then we end up casting or considering folks who are a completely different race because it just doesn't matter. It's okay. Who's going to do the best job and who's going to bring the most to the table. Uh, for example, Chris judge's character, uh, I initially conceived of as a, a strong black guy. And then we went from, as far as people we were approaching, cause I couldn't get in touch with, with Chris. I didn't have his contact at the time. We, you know, so, uh, we were like, okay, well, who can we go with that, that we can reach out to, um, and so it went from someone like Chris to, uh, you know, to several white guys to several, uh, Native American, you know, looking or, you know, Mexican looking guys, you know, and it just kind of cycled through a bunch of different characters until eventually we ended up with a big black guy, like I initially conceived, <laughs> but, uh, or for, or the captain I initially wrote as a white guy. And, uh, we ended up casting someone who was, um, uh, who is Middle Eastern. So it, it just d does it really matter for the story? Does, you know, is that a, a factor? Um, the, and also, I, personally, I've gotten very burned out on dealing with uh, race and gender in sci-fi. Well, growing up with uh, in the PC 90s, you know, that, that was a huge, huge thing with Star Trek, with, with uh, Battlestar Galactica, uh, so on and so forth. And what I found is for me, if I want to encourage those positive attitudes in race, again, comes back to just don't give a shit. Exactly. Just don't, don't ha show strong women being strong women alongside the men. Don't make a big deal about it. And just the fact that nobody cares that you have these strong women serving with strong men, uh, will, will make the statement you're trying to make. 
would pu- will push that positive future that you want to create. And I think Battlestar, uh, not Battlestar, yeah, Battlestar Galactica, the new one, uh, did a great job at that, where it's just, okay, you had strong women, you had uh, strong men, you had uh, strong men and women uh, who were gay, who were straight, who, you know, it just, it, nobody cared. Yeah. Um, and and so for me, that's, that's kind of how... Uh, I've, I've tried to comport myself in that matter. Now, there are little things I do, like like I try to make sure we at least pass the Bechdel test, which for those of you who don't know is two women with a name talking about something other than a man hmm. um, within the show. And so, I mean, there are little things, I, like subtle things I like to do with that, but um, it really drives me up a wall when I go back and, like, say, watch season one of TNG and uh, for any of you who remember, there was the episode where uh, there's a very patriarchal society of, um, of people whose skin is black. And they beam up and they see Tasha Yar as a security officer. And they're like, oh, my gosh, your security officer is a woman. And it's like, no, you're, you're trying so hard to be PC at that point that you end up being un-PC. You end up being sexist. Yeah. You know? Exactly. exactly. Um, you, you, it's really you've got to be really careful of whether you're walking the line or bouncing off the wall and ending up on the ground next to the line. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or or a, a long way from the line. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and so I mean, yeah, that's kind of how how I've done it. Now, I understand in this circumstance, like especially uh, Asians have gotten far less. Uh, the uh, screen time than a lot, even other minorities, and they've been betrayed horribly in the press historically, or in in, in Hollywood historically. For example, um, when you had John Wayne playing uh, Genghis Khan, <laughs> no, yeah, uh, do we have to... yeah. yeah, or or what was? Oh, I can uh, uh, Mickey Rooney, and I don't remember the film where he put, but he played this like buck tooth myopic Asian guy with this very racist accent. And it's like, yeah, you, you might have been able to get away with that in the 50s or 60s, but not today. Oh, yeah. It's like, try and do that today, and you're in jail. Yeah. Anyway, I, I kind of feel like I'm just like going on a rant and monopolizing the podcast, so I guess I'll let... <laughs> I'll shut yeah. up now. Yeah, um, I'd, I do understand where you're coming from, and um, there is a lot of different cases where it can be made where a character could be it's a fairly ambiguously written and there are definitely cases where characters are written a certain way like take again i hate gonna hit on chris judge again he was talking at his panel about they had written his character originally to not be african-american that if i remember correctly they said they'd originally written it to be asian and, uh, Are you talking about uh, his Tilk. character in Stargate? Yeah, Tilk. Yes. And um, but what happened was he was at a, a friend's place at the time, and he actually got a hold of the, the the test script that the friend was going in for reading for, called his um, manager and said, "Look, get me in on this thing, otherwise um, I'm getting a new manager." So they got him in on it and. Yeah, long story short, he obviously got it, and as a result, it's he became one of the biggest African American actors in sci-fi. Um, and there's very few African Americans can sort of have such a reach in sci-fi, except for um, what's his face? James I'm Earl thinking Jones? of Tim Russ. I don't know about you. Yeah. Oh yeah, James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. James uh, Earl Jones. Chris. Uh, Wolf, uh, Tim Ross, name, I can't remember. Michael Dorn. Yeah, there's there's only yeah. sort of a, a small handful of actors in sci-fi that are African American that are really well known, um, and True. he's just lucky enough to be one of them. So yeah. Now can you name any Asians? Bruce. 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 Lee. Bruce. Bruce. The name is Bruce. 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 This, this I mean, my... there's George A. and there's jo- uh, Jason Cho. That's that's all I can think of. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, like, there's a, there's a lot of characters I can think of, but I don't honestly don't know their actor names. That's the the big problem. Like George, I know because <laughs> I didn't know him as Sulu. I knew him as George. 
before that. So I knew him as George Takai before that. But if oh, you... did you did you meet him? Pun? You met him, or I mean, you didn't know him before he was on Star Trek. I know that much. No, 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 no. <laughs> what I mean was, I didn't see him on Star Trek and part of Star Trek. I found out about him as George Takai, like on Facebook, on Twitter, and stuff like that. Before I watched the original oh, series, okay. if you know, does that make a little bit more sense? Um, it, it, it does. That's, you got familiar with his Facebook feed that before, yeah, his massive, massive, massive outreach with his Facebook feed. Oh yeah. So, so you've got that. You've got um, yeah, the two guys from Heroes, one of which is in your thing. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how, how do I not think of James? <laughs> I was even thinking about his character a second ago. Like, when... <laughs> so, whoops. Yeah. James, don't listen to this. Uh... <laughs> no, no, James is awesome. James is awesome. Uh, and actually, that's a character that I wrote that I had a hard time casting anyone but an Asian in it. Yeah. So, And then you've got um, the guy that played you in Stargate and his first prime, whose name I can't think of. They were both really, really good. Um, oh, yes. oh! I see what you're talking about. You're talking about um, oh, you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Hey, you. Yeah. So anyway, all the all the all the puns done to death. Seriously. <laughs> to, to, <laughs> quote, to, quote, to quote the show. To quote Stargate, all the puns done to death. Um. <laughs> So, Insert yeah. pun here. But yeah, the, 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 the point is, you can the relatively speaking, the list of actors you know that aren't white is minute. Very. So what was that, Amy? I was thinking for um, Ghost in the Shell, the only other person I could think that would roughly, except she's a lot shorter, would actually be Agent May. In that that type of. Um, yeah. Oh, and, and, uh, what's her face plays Daisy. She she's uh, uh, she's part Asian, isn't she? Yeah, she's so. Chinese. She's, she's, she's actually a Chinese pop star before she um before she moved over to America. Oh, really? Her her English is really good. I had no clue. Yeah, yeah. Her first name Ali. Yeah, but but she actually um her her she took on her father's name. She came over to America, Ben, but her uh, her. Chinese name is Chloe. I think it's Hang. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She could have probably. She would have done a really good job out. with it. But yeah. Anyway. Um. She probably chose with Agents of Shield to do a, to take time off to do a movie like that. Yeah. Plus, she's not big enough to command the kind of of pre, uh, of dollars yeah. and get the kind of investment in that um, that it would take to do this. Exactly. This kind yeah. of movie. Okay. I was being physical state not money state it's more what i was meaning yeah the thing is in hollywood it's all interconnected yeah, yeah true. like I, I one of the people in the debate was like well wait are we talking about the moral aspect of this or the money aspect of this and i'm like you can't they're Separate. interrelated you can't separate them out that easily because of the fact that the movie doesn't get made if you don't pick the right actors exactly uh, at that level exactly so it, it, it's as much about name branding actors as it is about the story itself in a lot of cases in Hollywood which admittedly does kind of suck like there are pros and cons yeah to it. I mean it's 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 the business of it and partly and that's part of how this whitewashing got so entrenched is back in the day you know you had to hire a white guy because no one else there was no one else out there who would be taken seriously as an actor now I'm talking you know uh 50s 60s 70s um and, and so you you would have had, even though you're telling these tales of uh, of Asians or Middle Easterners or what have you, you'd have to hire the the white guy because the white guy is the one who could could get the movie made. Now that's starting to change, but it's still we're still dealing with it because of the fact that because there's been so few Asian roles out there or black roles or or you know insert minority race here, um, many 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 of the of the A listers that can that you can attach to the film and get that kind of uh, 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 money out of out of them, not out of them individually, but to attract investors, are still white. Yeah, exactly. But 
uh, over time that's it is slowly changing, which is a good thing. Okay, anyway, um, let's shift gears a little because we've been on this one for a little bit too long for my liking. Uh, well, fine, be that way. <laughs> How about talking about nobility? Yeah, let's talk about nobility. When, oh, are we, want. when are we getting our copies of the DVD? I was thinking Second Tuesday next week. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> um, all I can say is that we have some... Uh, 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 we're in talks with, with a number of folks, and let's just say things are getting very exciting. Uh, but I can't go into more detail than that, otherwise... A, if it doesn't come through, all the fans are going to be like, well, what the hell? You lied to us. And if it, or just by mentioning it publicly at this stage, uh, we could end up shooting ourselves in the foot and destroying the deal. Um, yeah, that, that's understandable. Uh, and, but because we pissed off our, our potential distributors. Um, so, yeah. So, that, as far as, as getting a look at it and seeing it, um, there, that's what's going on with, with broader dis- distribution. However, we are doing uh, screenings at various conventions. Uh, for example, uh, the next one that's coming up is going to be uh, Whedon, uh, Whedon Con, um with all the Joss Whedon folks. Uh, and that's going to be... We haven't set the exact date, but it, the convention runs from May 13th to the 15th. Nice. And then uh, Eugene over here is helping us out with a couple of cons back east. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, appreciate it, man. Details coming soon, as soon as we get them nailed down. Exactly. Um, and then there's a couple other cons that, um, uh, more major cons out here uh, on the West Coast that uh, aren't at a point where I can announce them publicly, but um, you know we'll, we'll, we'll probably have more on that in the next few weeks. Have you looked at doing any of the international cons, like any of the Armageddon, Supernovas, Oz Comic Cons down here, or any of the other big cons in the UK and Europe? Uh, it's definitely something I'm open to. Uh, the problem is uh, we ourselves don't have the uh, marketing budget yet to project ourselves that far. Uh, so sending uh, people, sending uh, equipment, things like that out there uh, to be able to do it properly at the same time. Uh, you know, if, if the situation rose, like like with uh, Eugene, who, who is a cool guy who, who we know, you know, we can trust with a copy of it uh, and, and it not fall in the wrong hands or something, uh, then, yeah, that's definitely something uh, we'll be, we can talk to those folks about. All right, sweet. We'll have to... Hit up the Supernova guys and see what we can organize for you down here. Hey, oh. that would be awesome. I, I would much appreciate it, especially with the the ones that are coming up soon. Yeah. Well, the next... Speaking of Supernova... Yeah, I'll just do it. I didn't, re- I didn't realize that they had done something very sneakily. Sneakily? Sneaky they or up... sneakily? It, it's meant to be sneaky. You are a very sneakily so guy. guy. Yeah. I am a very sneakily person. That's how you fit under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they, wheels they, on the bus they... go round and round <laughs> over Stewart's head, over Stewart's head. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Stuart, what are they? What are they doing sneakily? <laughs> <clears throat> they put up tickets for Sydney Supernova, and I had no, and they'd made no announcements on their page or anything. Ooh. I only I only had no, I only found this out because someone was looking for accommodation, so they had a VIP ticket. I was like, "Wait, what?" They have a what? So I jumped on last night. Yeah, all the all the VIP tickets for Sydney are gone. They didn't even put any announcements up or anything. Wow. So did you get a super queue? Yeah, I got two super queues. So. Yeah. Better than nothing, I guess. I was gonna surprise Jody, but not they were gone. I'm like, the when hell? did this happen? And where was the announcement? Because they always fill announcements up when they put the tickets up. Yeah. Well, it must be one of those sold out in ten minutes deals. Yeah, clearly, clearly. So. Anyway, sad face. Super Q will be good for you. Make sure you swing in and catch up with Scott when you're down there. Oh, they are going to be down there. As far as yep, I know. They're going to every single con. Yeah. Oh, nice. They're doing the full. T- oh, how the hell are you going to get with Adelaide? And Perth. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. Oh, that's it's going to be, be a- very careful. It's going to be a well, really just... good trick to get that bus from Sydney. Yeah, I was going to say, that's going to be a long drive. 
but uh, well, they they loaded on the back of a, f a f uh, five bed. That's how they got it from Brisbane to where was it? Melbourne. So if they could do yeah, Brisbane to Melbourne gonna be a... in less than a <laughs> week, then. <laughs> It's a lot further than oh, yeah, Brisbane and Melbourne it's from, all, it's from the, Sydney to Perth. It's the equivalent of driving from the east coast to west coast of the United States. Thereabouts. The difference being there is literally nothing between those two points. It's just it's just sand. The whole fucking way from one side to the other. Not, not even like gas stations? Oh, there's a couple no, there's, there's yeah. a couple of towns like here and there, but I don't think four houses and a petrol station counts as a town. Oh, we we got some towns like that in in the southwester. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's a gas station and a couple of houses up in the hills. Yeah, that's effectively pretty much between. You drive more than three hours from the coast of Australia, and there's just nothing. You could drive for a day and not hit anything. Oh, well, that's the truth. Right, right so I'm moving life. to Australia. What? <laughs> what was that? Interesting? Right, so I'm moving to Australia. <laughs> Just so, be careful of the drop bears, CJ. Yes. The drop bears. Of the what? Drop bears. Ignore them. I, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> no such thing. They're koalas. Well, technically, a koala falling from a tree and landing on you is a drop bear. Luckily. Oh. Yeah. And then ripping your face off. Yeah, yeah. It's a, well, no, no, no. See, that's that's why I hire a bunch of guys to go with me uh, with shotguns to uh, clear out all I'm the sorry, drop bears. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, EJ, but shotguns are illegal in Australia. I'm American. I'll find a way. <laughs> and koalas are actually protected. Yeah. And endangered species. Yeah. Because I'm American. American. I will find a way. They're, they've, they've all got <laughs> they've, they've all got chlamydia, and they're all dying. So chlamydia, isn't it? Well, oh, so. So, all I need to do is just not have sex with them and let them do their thing. And they'll die anyway. Pretty much, yeah. So. Okay. I don't think that's going to be a big challenge for me. You <laughs> should pack them into a stew pot. I'm sorry, what? I, I, yeah, what? You <laughs> pack them into a stew pot. Something about a pot? That's all I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Eugene. You are breaking up really badly. I said he's going to protect them into a stew pot. <laughs> oh, stew pot. <laughs> yeah. I, knew I, got pot I knew there was a pot at the end of it. I just yeah, didn't know what it was. I got the first half of the back half of the middle part was ball garbled for me. So, yeah, protect them all the way into a stew pot. Yeah. So, anyway. Well, yeah, you know. They got to eat, too. <laughs> they just can eat the veggies as they cook. Uh. Uh, well, actually, they only eat eucalyptus. They only eat eucalyptus leaves. That's all they eat. Just so they can eat, eat, eat they can eat the the salad while they cook. They probably won't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're insane enough to put <laughs> eucalyptus leaves in your salad, at which point have fun eating that. They're not tasty. Yeah, eucalyptus leaves. I, are I wouldn't nasty. know. Nothing. I mean, we've got plenty of eucalyptus here in my hometown, but I never exactly tried chewing on it. So, anyway. Um, so, other than the bad joke about distribution, and why we haven't received our DVDs yet, damn it. Um, what else is happening on the nobility It wasn't a bad joke, front? it was a good joke. I enjoyed the joke. Oh, God. So what, <laughs> what else is happening on the nobility uh, front? Oh well, just the you know um, continuing to develop it. I, uh, outside of, of finding distribution at point, that's where most of our efforts are taking place. Uh, we updated the website a little bit ago, so uh, folks who've been going there more recently have been seeing that. Um, you know, yeah, just uh, we had an amazing WonderCon. Um, you know, definitely made some some nice connections there, and and it was it, it was a fun little story where I'm I'm okay. So I went to the Conman panel. You guys know what Conman is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, with Alan Tudor. Yeah, we we actually reviewed it a while ago. It's 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 all right. I enjoyed it. Um, anywho, so I went to the Conman panel, and it was in the Microsoft Theater uh, in uh, by the LA uh, Staples Center, but in the LA Convention Center. And so it's this big theater, and the panel is up on the stage. 
and like everything's dark except you know it's like going to a play where everything's dark except for for the main stage and uh it was actually the same place where i went to the people's choice awards earlier this year and so anyway so i'm sitting there in the dark fiddling with my phone while the panel's going on and this guy comes by walks past me stops turns around and he's like are you are you and, and it says my name i'm like yeah he's like the ability's awesome and runs off and I, i'm guessing you saw it at our at, uh, at lost con or, or at our premiere at kamikaze <laughs> but i was like thank you random fan guy appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> That moment when someone says, "Are you this person?" You're like, "This guy is either a fan or a hitman." Do I say yes? I'm in public, surrounded by people, even though it's dark. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Um, but yeah, no, no. That so that was really cool. We, and I had a, a, a couple of uh, instances like that. So it was just really interesting to see how this thing that started out with just this thing and me and a few of our friends were dealing with is, is gaining traction and, and uh, how people are responding to it. So that was really, um, really cool to see. Yeah. So, and then, you know, we'll just keep going with it. Oh yeah. Don't stop trucking. Especially you, Thomas. Don't stop believing. Hang on to that feeling. And now you know what happened to my singing career. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I was going to say, I wasn't that bad, was I? Gosh, just silence? I thought I'd get a laugh out of that one. <laughs> well, I successfully smashed... my head and going, nope. <laughs> successfully smashed my microphone, so yay me. <laughs> Rule one of yeah. podcasting, don't touch the microphone. Slaps the also microphone. Also, can't You would have learned that by now. Yeah, it happens a lot. <laughs> also, officially can't hear out of one ear now. Thanks, CJ. <laughs> Yes. You're welcome. I'd say that I'm the same, but that's just because one ear in my headphones doesn't work. <laughs> so, yeah. That uh, must get so really we'll... annoying. <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, yeah, we actually, I actually had a really <laughs> brief word to Chris about nobility when he was over here, and T said he's definitely looking forward to doing more with it, given a chance, so, yeah. Nice. Well, um, hopefully I'll have some, uh, if all goes well, I I'll hopefully we'll have some news for him uh, when he gets back in town. Yeah. After I uh, tormented him a little. Yeah, 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 and scared the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this guy, he, he, he texts me, hey, just talk to Chris. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I guess Chris is down in Supernova. Great. You know, okay. He's like, yeah, I told, I, I told him how I know you and that I was watching him for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you did what? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay. So Chris either knows that this guy is joking or I just became the creepiest producer in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was very, very clear that I was just mucking around. That said, if you get a phone call from him, him being angry, I haven't arranged for him to do that at all. So that's not, some, that's not something that may or may not happen. Yeah, yeah, the fact that you know about it already. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't arrange it at all. You have nothing to do with it. No uh, way. But it, it makes a, this makes a fairly decent segue into Deadliest Fandom, because I actually had a... Because I was at the front of the line. I mentioned this last week um, on the podcast. I was at the front of the line talking to him for a couple of minutes because the person who was doing the tickets machine thing wasn't working, so she couldn't scan. So we're waiting for her to sort that out. And because I had the super cure, I was at the very front, so I was just having a bit of a chat to him. Um, and I just sort of, yeah, cleared all that up. And then I said, what would be really, really funny, because um, we're working, I know how much he's a sci-fi fan, I said, I'm working on this project with EJ, it's Deadliest Fandom, this is what we're doing. Um, and if you're interested in doing something like that, um, um, then just send EJ a message and let him know, and EJ will sort out all the details with you. And he's like, yeah, that's really cool. And then he stopped, and he had this big, cheesy grin. And he goes, I've got a better plan. I thought, oh, God. He goes, I'm going to call oh, him. No. 
really, really angry about this random Australian guy because I said just just call me the random Australian guy and he'll know that's me. And I'll be really, really angry about it. When he sounds like he's about to start crying, I immediately flip and say, I heard about this deadly fandom thing. It sounds like a really good idea. <laughs> he would so do that, too. He would so do that. Oh, God. Oh. Now, see, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to respond to that, because now that I know it's coming, uh, it's like, do I, like, like just throw him for a loop and be equally pissed? <laughs> you know? How dare you go to Australia you. and not mention nobility? Well, <laughs> <laughs> or or do I play it cool like yeah I have actors uh, I, I have uh, uh, I keep track of uh, tabs on all of my actors <laughs> by the way your wife says hi <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> it just really just screw them hey EJ it could have been funnier if um, Chris had turned around and just called you randomly yeah just just right then and there got At- his phone out and just calls you and goes so, uh, hi AJ, it's Chris. Uh, hi? Yeah, I've got this crazy Australian dude. It's not me! <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell EJ about Chris losing his hat oh, on stage. So funny. So, we're at the panel, right? And Chris is talking about... I so hope they film this. Chris was talking about how when he was on Stargate, the prosthetics used to burn into his forehead. And at the time, he was wearing just a really soft, sort of floppy hat. And um, so he's got the hat on. He's talking about it. He's like, yeah, I used to go to clubs and I'd wear a hat to cover it up because I didn't want anyone to see it because it looked really bad. And then this hot chick walks over to me and goes, oh, my God, you're that guy from, are you that guy from um, Stargate? And then he flicked his hand up to knock his hat off so it would fall down on the stage behind him. And he goes, yes, yes, I am. And sort of played off that, got a good laugh. What he didn't realise was, we weren't necessarily laughing at the story. We were laughing at the fact that the hat vanished down the back of the stage without him noticing. So he, he finishes telling the story and he looks to his right to pick up the hat, leads around to pick up the hat, doesn't see it, looks to his left to, to, to try and pick up the hat, doesn't see it, looks at us so confused. <laughs> this, this look of, what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, up. he is such a fun guy to have. Oh, well, just in general, but to have they have on stage on a panel or something. He's such a fun guy. Uh, have you guys seen any of the video from the the first uh, SDCC uh, um, panel we did, where we had the entire cast up there? No. Oh well, at, at one point, like we uh, everyone kept saying, like how much they love. Uh, 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 you know, hanging out with Chris and how, how Chris is such a great guy. And, and like the, the first time it, he, someone started doing it, he's like, you know, yeah, hey, so this is my room. If you want to come on by. And then the next person did it. And the other guy, and then someone else is like, well, can't I come to the room too? And he's just like, my room's good. My bed's going to be full tonight. <laughs> It was just so, hilarious. So, so the all- funny thing is, is that we did end up in his room getting shit <laughs> So that's another story. <laughs> so, so he's on stage, wandering around, looking for his hat, trying to work out what the hell happened. And what had happened was, when he'd flicked it, it hit the psych behind the stage. And there's about a three millimeter gap. Because his hat was so floppy, it had just gone straight down a three millimeter gap and under the stage. So, so he moves the chair forward and climbs down with his ass up in the air and stands back up, <laughs> looks at the audience and goes, you better not take photos of this. And then climbs back, reaches down under the stage and pulls his hat out, puts it on and goes, I didn't really do my, my hair for for seeing today. It was always meant to be under the hat. <laughs> <Where? laughs> oh, does he have hair now? I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, he's got hair. He had this little sort of manly little hairy bunchy dealy on the top at the back all right all right yeah we we've been uh i yeah, i haven't seen him in ages he's uh like we, we've been talking on the phone and stuff and via email and whatnot but uh i haven't like actually sat down with him in, in a few months yeah so anyway but anyway deadly fandom real quick we covered in about what five we got about five five ten minutes before we have to throw it over to eugene um so anyway back to chris yeah anyway back to chris <laughs> 
So anyway, Deadly Spandom <laughs> is an idea that because I love I love the death battle videos. I love those sort of a uh, who would win this guy or that guy. And for since about oh would have been two thousand and nine, two thousand and eight. When did that new Star Trek movie first come out? The first one, Stuart. Oh nine. Oh nine, yeah. Since about two thousand and nine, yeah. I've been working on. A, I worked on a mod called Sci-Fi at War, and it was basically putting different universes up against each other, and so that you could play, you could either play a Star Wars, and the Star Wars faction would have rebel ships and Clone Wars ships and Empire ships all on the same team, and the Stargate ships would have human, Ori, Asgard, Wraith, Gould ships all on the same team. And that way, it was sort of like a, each universe, one universe versus another universe, you could build your fleet however you wanted and try and defeat the other side in, in a real-time strategy. And Trek destroys them all. And I, well, I built the mod so it was really balanced, so each ship was on each power level was exactly the same as another ship on that same power level. So one-on-one, -on -one, they, they may not... One ship would all, may win every time, but it would only win by a tiny fraction of a percentage. Um, and that would be Star Trek. Actually, most of the time it was Stargate, because Stargate's better. Anyway, not the point. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, that's just because of the way the Stargate weapons work. Just for whatever reason, no matter how I tried to balance them, I just couldn't quite make them... They'd either become ridiculously weak and lose to everything, or ridiculously OP and win to everything. I just there was, I could not work out a way to get a middle ground on that one. So, half the ships are really weak, half the ships are really strong. Anyway, so Sci-Fi War, it's a mod for Empire War Force of Corruption. And as part of that, I did lots of versus pitches, sort of. Who would win? A Clone Wars trooper ship versus um, an Asgard O'Neill class. And just just sort of random mashups like that. Anyway, fast forward to about 2012-ish when I joined um, Save Sci-Fi. I started doing versus pitches on there. So I took some of the pitches that I had from the game, which is the models from the game, which were pretty low-end models, replaced them with high-end screen grabs from TV shows and movies and stuff like that. And... For about the past three years, I've been doing one a week until about two months ago when I ran out of pictures um, and started focusing more on this, um, sort of a versus a week. And then about 12 months ago, I was talking to one of my friends, Alex, and we were planning on doing a death battle style video, but with spaceships. We, were just, we just couldn't, for the life of us, organize... A time when we could both be together to record it because we're just going to record a voiceover and just put video from the show over it. exactly how death battle does it sort of break down this one ship break down the other ship and then have them fighting each other and use that old sci-fi at war mod as the basis for the combat just rework it so it's balanced closer to how it would be in the unit that their own universe so the stargate ships the shields would be would be dialed up and the weapons would be dialed down whereas say the star trek ships the weapons would be dialed up, but the shields would be left roughly about the same. Because um, that's just how the mod was sort of balanced. And so I'd rework, and then that would be sort of the battle. And we would record that battle about a dozen times and then cut those different battles together to have one sort of longer battle with a sort of a definitive who would win at the very end and then sort of an outro, which is sort of explaining why that ship lost, relatively speaking. Um, and then, so, because I couldn't match times with Alex about it, I hit up EJ. And EJ went... You should have seen how he did it. He calls me up, he's like, hey baby, I got something for you. And yeah. I was like really creeped out. It was weird. Yeah, yeah. you know you love it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's all night long. Yeah, you know you want it. Anyway, um, so I called up EJ, and I let EJ take over his side, because this is about the point where I effectively handed the baton off to him, because EJ went sort of... Like a better word, crazy with power. <laughs> I don't know about crazy with power, but um, well, okay. So, so, so David approached me with this concept, and I was like, okay, you know, it's cool. Let's you know work together. Of course, you know, um, I'm I'm gonna want to to make the best quality 
uh, as I possibly can. Um, and, and so we started talking about how, how we can take that initial concept and, and kind of raise the bar. And I started getting some friends of mine involved who, who know uh, animation and, and that kind of thing. And, and it just almost immediately started evolving uh, into, into something more. And um, with, with all of us working together, and at one point, I was talking with uh, one of my producing partners, um, and he was talking about how uh, he was looking at some short-form content for uh, this uh, uh, metro system out back east that wants to do um, content uh, for their, like, you know, short 5, 10, 15-minute uh, short-form content uh, that they're... Um, writers can watch during their commute and I'm like okay well you know hey I do have this one thing that I've been I've been working on and it wasn't called I don't think we really had a name for it yet at this point I'd I'd called it Um, sci-fi wars more because of the original mod sci-fi at war and the reason that was called sci-fi at war is the game the original game I modded was Star Wars Empire at War so I just sort of dropped the Empire and put sci-fi because of all the different sci-fi series. So I was just running with sci-fi wars because, yeah, I like it. It's a nice little short title. Anyway, keep going. It is. It is. Um, and so and so he's like, ooh, I like this idea. And we immediately just start kind of spitballing on how if we were to run with this, what we would do with it. And and uh, we're ta- you know, talking about places we could take it to for distribution, major, you know, networks and, and internet distribution uh, companies and, and things like that. I don't want to name names because yeah. similar to what's going on with the nobility, we, we're, we're in talks with these guys. So. Exactly. But, um, but like I said, EJ got drunk with power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and then we just evolved it yeah. into, and, and, and rather than being the short form uh, uh, thing uh, for the internet uh, strictly uh, based on, starships it it kind of evolved into something that encompasses not just starships but also characters and even um other genres like fantasy or horror or what have you yeah. uh and you know we we came up with a six act structure and it's going to be I, I i don't want to give it all away because you know other people are listening but uh, once this finally uh gets distribution gets made and gets out there it's something that People are really going to enjoy. And if you want to get a taste of the work uh, we've been doing so far, go ahead and check out uh, Facebook.com uh, slash Deadliest Fandom. De- Facebook.com can... slash The Deadliest Fandom. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, the we, Deadliest yeah, Fandom. We, 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 the we, is important. Somebody has got Deadliest Fandom. We don't know who you are, but we hate you. Just for the record. <laughs> With a passion. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and they're just holding the Facebook uh, page they, uh, and the link. They don't have anything going on. There's yeah. no pictures or anything. Anyway, so facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom. Or at deadliest, uh, fandom, this... on, at deadliest fandom on Twitter and deadliest right. fandom on Snapchat, I think. I think we have a Snapchat. I don't think we're really actively using it. I think yeah. we just grabbed it so no one else could. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, uh, and then we're in the process of building our website, which would be deadliestfandom.com. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so uh, just kind of been picking away at that. We, I can say that uh, we have Gigi Edgley uh, hosting, so that, um, that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, yes, yes. So those who don't know who that is, she was on Farscape. She is from Perth. Yes. She is getting awesome, and we love her. Especially out there in Australia, but the sci-fi world loves her too, uh, wherever she goes. Um, you know, just uh, you know, I loved her character on Farscape, and then just the 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 few times that I've been able to to kind of talk to her, just really nice gal. Yeah. Uh, really enjoyed yeah. that, and it's going to be a lot of fun working with her. So, so every week on the Facebook page, deadliest uh, Facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom, we're putting up versus pictures and ship specs. So I'm going through and I'm watching sort of heaps of different episodes of, say, Stargate, a series that doesn't have official stats for their ships, for their weapon damage, for their shield strengths and stuff like that. And I'm using, trying, doing my best to find a baseline and then extrapolating out off that to get proper numbers um, for shield strength for different ships and different weapons and stuff like that, um, which is a lot easier said than done. Mm. Um, and 
once I've got a rough idea, I'll then go back and I'll check out all of the different battles that that ship's invo involved in and make sure that it's consistent with as many of those as possible because a lot of this in a lot of the series the shield strength the weapon strength stuff like that varies especially in stargate depending depends on, on the, what weapons they use, yeah, who they're battling depends on the story depends on who they're fighting depends on about a dozen different things so we've got to make sure that all of that stuff sort of matches across the board and so i'm going out of my way to make sure that that happens last couple of weeks i've done prometheus daedalus and the f302 from stargate this week coming up i'm moving on to halo so we're going to be doing the um, Sharon-class frigate, the Ford Unto Dawn. And next week we're doing the Halcyon-class, which is the Pillar of Autumn. So that's what to look forward to for the ship specs for the next couple of weeks. And that's one thing I have to say that, like, like David, you've been doing a really good job with is um, you, you that, that, that scientific aspect of breaking it down and, okay, actually making it something that is more than just a popularity vote. Um, it's, that's yeah. uh, been something that you've been really good at, at contributing to um, the project, so that's cool. And, and you know, I, I, I know I kind of, like, taken things, you know, uh, James and I have kind of, kind of, like, taken things with run and run with them over here as far as, like, organizing yeah. the show. As long as I get paid, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, like, I know we've been, like, kind yeah. of taking things and running with them, but, but um, you know, per your request, but, yeah. you know, still, you that's, guys... that's definitely something that you've been yeah, like you've been doing a really good job with, and, and we'll continue to, exactly. I'm sure. So, anyway, um, so that's roughly where Deadliest Fandom is at the moment. We'll give you guys an update on the podcast as we have them. Um, so, yeah, so anyway, let's move on to Eugene and do the model report. And this week, we're going to have an actual model report. Well, we've had a, we've had a number of uh, loot crate and geek fuel reports and some of the other stuff. So this week we're going to do actual model kits. Um, it's already posted up on the um, Facebook page, <laughs> Safe Side. Yes. Sorry. Round two. Round two is doing quite a bit of reissuing in honor of the Star Trek 50th anniversary this year. They've uh, a lot of these have special boxes that have the 50th anniversary logo on them. Um, some of the kits that have been reissued, reissued include the um, Cutaway Enterprise. Um, there's also a special edition Build Together, which has the original 1 650th scale Enterprise and a Snap Together 1 1000th. That box shows a picture of, like, a father and his son. <laughs> wow, that, that box is so 60s, just saying. The Enterprise C kit has been reissued. I do not know if that one includes the decal, the damage decals from that they had in the last issue. That I'll have to find out. For a future update, they've also reissued the 1650th Enterprise and the Klingon Bird of Prey is back out. And it turns out that this is the one I mentioned at the beginning of the year that had been discontinued, which includes the landing ramp, the, the metal landing legs, an extra set of engine baffles so you put the wings in the landed position. Nice. My only complaint with that kit is it's four, four separate baffles. You can't um, make the wings move. That's the, There is a resin aftermarket set for that that I really wish round two would produce for this kit. Nice. Um, yep. But those, there's a lot of Star Trek... Oh, the other item that they're reissuing is the light rig for the 1350th Enterprise uh, original series kit, but the price has gone up on it. Suggested retail on that is about $200, and it's due out either June or July. Yeah. But it, this is one that you basically plug and play on that. Nice. But it's an ex 
Yep. But that's the hobby report. Um, brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. Nice. Well, unfortunately, Amy has just brought to our attention some very, very sad news that's only just broken in the last 10, 15 minutes. Uh, the Everybody Loves Raymond star Doris Roberts the, um, has passed away. Um, she played Robert's mother in Everybody Loves Raymond. Um, so that is incredibly, incredibly sad news. So that's like a, it's almost like a chunk of the childhood gone. It was over here. Chan- uh, Channel 10 was the show that you used to watch if you didn't want to watch adult stuff when you were a kid growing up. And they always had reruns of Seinfeld and reruns of Everybody Loves Raymond at 7 o'clock every night, always during the week. Back when we had five channels. And yeah, so... A lot of us grew up watching her in that series, so... Yeah, that's really, really sad. Well, she lived a long life. She's lived to 90. Oh yeah, she made it to 90, so that's really good. So anyway, Stuart, you have three minutes to do the news. And let's keep on sad news with Star Trek Beyond news. <laughs> God. Yep. Or the or the lack thereof. Like yeah. we haven't heard anything. There hasn't even been a trailer drop. It's not that far off. What the hell? Well, we finally have some new news. Idris Elba finally talks about his character in, in, in um in Star Trek Beyond. He's going to be playing the main villain, Kral. Okay. He is not. He is not a Gorn. He is a new species in the Star Trek universe, and basically, he is his um his uh oh, what do I say his mission is basically he's he doesn't agree with what the Federation is, and he's just going to go against them. Okay, so effectively, it's a instead of a we're all the same, we're all sort of deserving sort of philosophy. It's a everyone should stand on their own sort of philosophy. Kind of like this, yep. sto- kind of like Horizons, the fan film Horizons, the bad guys in that, that were trying yeah. to sort of, yeah. So yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, he did an interview with um, uh, Entertainment Weekly. And one, of my, one of my favorite questions is, uh, "What is Carl's re- relationship like with Kirk and Beyond?" And it was like working with Chris, Chris Pine is great, but in terms of Carl and Kirk, can we say Jaws and Dory? Oh God! Just to mention that Dory makes me shudder. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Supergirl season finale is this week. What's it been up with that? I didn't see anything last week. You said uh, it was back. Basically, you lied. Uh, no, no, I said Flash was back. I was wrong. It's this week. I'm getting my days mixed up because they keep taking breaks. Yeah. <laughs> really getting annoyed with everything taking breaks. Yeah. Like coming back for a week and then taking like a two to three week break. Like why? I'm going to blame EJ. You can't blame, it's blame your EJ fault, for David. it. It always is. <laughs> Wait, I thought it was Stuart we always blamed and the airlocked him. Yeah, well, we can't. He's doing the news. <laughs> so this is funny. Well, you uh, can still airlock him. It's just then there's no news. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got a minute, um, so he better be quick. <laughs> so, um, uh, Colson... <laughs> um... <laughs> Clark Gregg um, is going to be a lipstick battle versus um, versing uh, Haley Atwell, Agent Carter, and uh, he's before he performed uh, Britney Spears' Toxic and actually got like full dressed up for it. Oh God! It's it's <laughs> it's Colson as you've never seen him before, folks. Oh God! But yeah, other than that, there's nothing real major on the on the. Yeah. I, know, the, I know that in, from... in, in Star Trek they're going to be talking about Spock's death. The old Spock will be mentioned. Yeah, yeah, they, I know they're going to uh, do something with, yeah. with, with about that, so. which is nice. It is. So Anyway, that's it for this week's podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, considering we just made it up as we went, I think we did really well. Um, so <laughs> make sure you check out facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom. Give us a like, you know you want to. Check out facebook.com slash save sci-fi, facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast for all your podcast and sci-fi related news and things. Uh, Keep an eye on YouTube for the podcast to go up there, as well as on iTunes and Stitcher and anywhere else podcasts live. If we find out where this podcast isn't, we'll do our best to put it there. Also, check out Nobility the Series. It's going to be really good, isn't it, EJ? 
Uh, I wish I knew, honestly. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, that's it. Catch you guys later. Later, Bye. everyone. Bye. So long. Thanks for all the fish. Do, 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 do. I've got a re- really? I've, been, I've been doing this for 70 episodes and I still can't remember the damn words. Oh well, you get that. <laughs> Eventually I'll learn the words. Eventually I'll learn the words.